Good evening, everybody. Carol Garrison with Carol's Creative Escape. It is Monday, July 24th. Yeah, July 24th. And thank you so much for joining me tonight. I appreciate it. Um, I am a few minutes late for that. I apologize. I've been working on my card for tonight's demonstration. Um, knew I should have had it done yesterday, but I cleaned and cleaned my workspace, my craft area, and it turned into a bigger project than I thought, so I didn't get my design time yesterday. But that's all right. I've got a new stamp set that I'm anxious to share with you tonight, and I think you're really going to like the card tonight, but I'm not going to be able to show you the finished product until we're all done with the video tonight. Um, as I said, my name is Carol Garrison with Carol's Creative Escape. I've been stamping with Stampin' Up! for about 10 years, and making cards for about 30 years. And my goal tonight, or tonight and any time I'm stamping, is to simply spread joy one card at a time. So even if you don't have the stamp set, perhaps you can do a card using the similar layout um, and send that off to somebody that's deserving of receiving a card from you. So tonight, um, I'm going to be featuring the Earth and Textures um, stamp set and dies along with a new uh, embossing folder as well. And so it's a little bit different color card and um, color tones for me. I tend to prefer bright colors and things like that. But um, for some reason, when I saw this set, I really liked it and decided I was going to give it a whirl, even though it's not my normal go-to type stamp set or um, colors. And I think once you see me start working around um, hi, Lynn. Thanks for joining me. Once you start seeing me work with the um, the dies and especially the designer series paper and see how those two work together so nicely. I know normally we're used to our stamps and dies working together nicely, um, but this paper really lends itself to the shapes of some of these dies. So I will get started on that. Let me go ahead and just flip my camera over. I apologize for any shaking that may occur here and I'll get it flipped over as I'm doing this. There's my close-up of my hand. Ooh, isn't that lovely? Yikes. All right. So let me get things in order here and I think I've got it. I just need to remove my fancy um, camera stand. It's actually three paper pumpkin boxes in case you're wondering whatever it is that, that I move each week. Um, just three paper pumpkin boxes, nothing fancier than that. But it gets my individual stand just where I need it um, when I'm doing part of my videotaping here. So the stamp set that I'm going to share with you tonight, like I said, is called Earth and Textures and it includes a coordinating die set also called Earth and Textures. And so that die coordinates with this, 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 and this. And then there's a lot of just really fun dies that you can use um, to add a little texture or detail. And I did want to take just a few minutes to show you some of these dies because they are pretty cool. Um, we've got the pot and that again coordinates with the stamp set. So there's the two pots that you can die cut. And then this is kind of the wheat shaft. And this piece goes with this stamp. And this one will go with this stamp. And then here are all the other extra dies that you can get. Um, you know, I am missing one, and I'm not the least bit surprised. My kittens were climbing all over my work area, and I think one of them might have knocked it down. I'm going to see if I can find it, because it is pretty cool, and I wanted you to see that. All right, I'm going to keep looking for it. Um, this piece works very nicely as the top of one of the vases. It does fit on this one if you want it to overhang just a little bit. Otherwise, it fits real snugly with that one. And then there is one die that just leaves an impression. And that's this. Um, I'm going to see. Yeah, I think you can see that. So it just gives a little texture. Um, the back side isn't real nice, but I like the front side. It kind of adds a rope. 
sort of look. And I'm just going to see if I can find. Yep, there it is on the floor. Thanks to kitties. Um, it's this fan leaf. I'm not sure really what it's called, but it's scored so that you can fold the leaves along that score line and get some three-dimensional texture to your leaf if you want to. Um, here is what the leaf looks like on gold foil unfolded. So it works either way. Um, but that adds a little bit of texture as well to your card, kind of a three-dimensional piece. So pretty cool dies that go with that. And then real quick, I will show you the designer series paper because this is actually kind of what caught my eye to start with. So the designer series paper is called Earth and Elegance. And the colors that go with this designer series paper include the Pebbled Path, the copper clay, nope, copper clay, pecan pie, misty moonlight, peacock, oh, what's it called? Pretty peacock, gray granite, and then the moody mauve. And today I'm kind of focusing more on the brown tones and pretty peacock as my colors, but you'll see some of these colors pop out in other pieces. So here's the designer series paper. You've got this all over design of, I think, stems and leaves kind of, and then just a solid misty moonlight. And then this would be our moody mauve, kind of in a pattern, but envision one of these pots die cut in here, and you could have a pattern on your pot. The back side is, again, it would make another nice pot pattern. Um, I'm also seeing a lot of masculine type paper in here. To me, this almost looks like a tire tread, but again, it could be on a clay pot. You could have that pattern on there. All over Pretty Peacock. And then we've got this one that's kind of your brown tones. And I just want to show you real quick, look at how you can get a pretty cool, I think I did it somewhere down in here. Maybe it was up here. Um, yep, right there. A pretty cool pot with the ombre look and colors, just depending on where you place it here on your designer series paper. And here's another all over misty moonlight kind of denim, kind of, I don't know. And then this is one of those pieces that you can cut in half and have a really nice card front that you could work with. And then again, here's a um, kind of ombre envision how cool a pot might look with that paper. So just a little tease or two here. And then last but not least, we've got this piece, which is kind of like the top of a pot where you've added some color glaze and you can get that color then running down your pot and create a fun looking pot. I'm trying to find my piece that's going to show that off the most. Um, anyhow, get a fun looking pot with a little bit of that glaze running down the top of it, all from one little die cut. So pretty, pretty cool paper to work with on that. And then here's just an all over, um, pattern to that as well. So that's just a quick show and tell of this product. And in case you're wondering where it might be in the catalog. Yay, Carol, I actually marked it this time. It's on page 70 and 71, and it does come with a kind of rope type ribbon as well. I don't have that, so you're not gonna see me using that today. Um, but there's some beautiful examples of all the different dies and things that this set includes too, to entice you a little bit. And you can get the full suite of products, which would include the designer series paper, the rope along with the stamps and the dies. I just have these items here and that's what you're going to see me working with tonight. And then I'm also using a new embossing folder. It is the exposed brick 3D embossing folder and it leaves a very cool image uh, when you run it through your embossing machine. And I think I'm going to highlight this one just a little bit tonight with a blending brush to add a little bit more depth to it. So we'll get to see how that looks. 
So let's go ahead, enough commercial. We're gonna go ahead and get started. And I am just gonna grab a piece of scrap paper right here so that I can do my blending. And the other thing that I wanna do is get the inside of my card stamped. I am using Pretty Peacock as my stamp for my sentiments. And so I am gonna go ahead and get that inked up and stamped on my card. Um, I like to let ink dry just a little bit before I work with it, especially when I'm doing the darker colors. And make sure that you stamp it going the direction your card is gonna go. The first time I stamped this, I had it going the wrong way. So I had to start over. I will also say that with this stamped image below the E, there are dots. And the first time I stamped this, I thought I had somehow managed to get ink there. It is intended to be there, so you did not make a mistake and you do not need to re-stamp that particular sentiment because it does actually come with those little dots right below the E's. It'll save you a little bit of time. All right, so let me grab my blending brush and I'm gonna use the pecan pie. And because these are new colors, my ink pads are fairly um, juicy. And so I do want to make sure that I'm starting off my paper just a little bit. And then I'm just going to come on and rub the blending brush over it. And that just gives it a little more texture and detail. Um, it might be a little heavier down here, but we're going to live with it. I think it'll be just fine. I can get rid of that scrap paper. And now we're just going to start putting this card together that's all in my head. I do have it planned out. I'm just not 100% sure how it's going to look when it's done. So to start with on this card, we've got a 5.5 by 8.5 piece of cardstock scored at four and a quarter and for some reason this looks taller to me than five and a half i just want to verify nope it's five and a half all right that's cool my inside card piece is very vanilla and that's four by five and a quarter and then i have another piece of very vanilla which measures three and a half by four and three quarters. I wanted to have a slightly bigger border on this card. And then I've got a piece of the pecan pie, copper clay, copper clay, sorry, I'm getting these two colors mixed up, that measures um, four by five and a quarter that will be underneath this. And then basically I've used scraps to stamp and die cut a couple of the different images here. I've used gold foil to get this leaf and then I strategically place my die so that I could get that um, kind of runoff look and then I'm missing my teal colored pot. I've got a couple of vellum pieces that include that, I don't know, straw type look. And, hmm, I, I don't think I could blame this one on the cat. I wish I could. There it is, it was just backwards. I want to use the two teal and the one brown pot, and then we're going to put handle on it too. So let's go ahead. Oh, and I also used the thank you um, sentiment for the front of this card. So let's go ahead and start assembling and we'll see what it looks like. So I'm gonna fold my card base in half. Grab my bone folder here. Hi Ann, hi Jody, thanks for tuning in. And I'm just gonna start as long as this inside piece is done. If I suddenly yelp, one of the kittens is down underneath my table attacking my feet right now. 
So you'll know why. It's nothing serious. It's just sharp kitty claws and teeth. Okay, so I'm going to put that piece there. <laughs> These are the pieces that I'm confident about how I'm going to assemble them. And we put this copper clay. I really like this copper clay. It's a pretty color. I'm going to put that and just center it on the front of my card. And remember the trick that I've told you, if you can get it lined up in diagonal corners, these other corners will match up too. And then I am going to add this layer. I really, really like the depth and detail of this die. It's a little more exciting than the um, straight bricks and it's kind of reminiscent too of the um, time-worn type embossing folder with the splotches running through it, but I think it gives a really cool image. Okay, so now I've got, I want to use this piece kind of in the center, and I'm not going to have any greenery sticking out of it. And then we'll probably put this pot next to it. I was hoping I could put this in here, um, but it's, it's not going to work, so I am going to put that in this pot. And we'll just trim off part of the stem. Um, like I said, this pot is more the decor on the table. And then we'll add this little pot along with the handle. And it's going to have that in there with these vellum pieces. So I think that's how we're going to see it assembled. So let's go ahead and start putting it together because this is going in the center. I'm going to put it on first, and I do want to pop these up, these vases up on dimensionals just because it adds some texture to the card beyond what I've got here already. I hope everybody had a good week. Um, we had some rain move through we've had we have not had a lot of rain this year but the last couple days we've had these quick storms pop up that have punched quite a wallop of wind with them that's caused trees in my areas to come down um, some people have lost power we did not lose power in any of these storms yet nor did we have any trees come down for which i'm grateful we have had some branches to pick up but that's pretty normal for us um, whenever there's a storm that blows through, I've got some big older trees that tend to drop stuff off. So we got a couple of those that blew through this afternoon. And then we're going to enter the heat wave that's kind of been out west is moving here. So they are predicting the possibility of a 100 degree temperature um, one day yet this week. And that is very warm for us. So we'll see see what happens. We'll definitely have our AC on. That's for sure. Okay, so we've got our first pot in. And like I said, I did want to add just this teal to put a little color over here. So again, I need to shorten up that stem. And on here, I'm just going to add a little adhesive to the back of that. So it was funny, yesterday I decided I, I really need to get my craft area put back in order from when I had my window installed and just get pieces picked up. So I started texting pictures to my sisters. Here's what I'm trying to do. And I had the mess of um, everything all over the floor. And then they started texting me pictures of their messy craft room. So we're trying to come up with a plan to improve all of our craft areas somehow. All right. So maybe maybe with a combined effort here, we can help each other get our craft room. What's the hardest thing for you guys to keep clean? Oh, cat just jumped on my shoulders from the couch. Um, what's the hardest thing for you guys to keep clean in your craft area? For me, it's I tend to pile stuff on my floor. 
and then all of a sudden I discover that my piles have really gotten out of hand and that's sort of where I'm at in my craft space. I got stuff put away that I knew I needed um, but then I have kind of this miscellaneous stuff that was piled up before as well. Okay we've got a little companion joining us. This is, which one are you? That is Xena. Or at least Xena's feet and her tail. As long as she stays out of the open ink pads, I'm okay with her being up here with me. All right, we're gonna put that there. And then last but not least, I wanna add these pieces of vellum. And I am gonna tuck them down in the pot a little bit. Um, so I actually am gonna pull this pot up if I can so that I can put the vellum down. All right, Zena, where did uh, my mini glue dots? They're right in front of me. Mm-hmm. Okay. You can go on the floor now. A lot of times putting her on the floor doesn't discourage her. She just hops back up. So I put a mini glue dot kind of in the middle and then at the base of this one because it'll be covered. Um, Depending on how I'm using it, I worry a little bit more if my glue dots are going to show through or not. And then I'll repeat that on this one. And this one I think I'm actually going to just put, whoops, put one right there. And we'll drop that a little bit lower. I'm gonna bring in my snips and just trim the ends off of these because I don't really want them sticking out. And then I'm gonna bring that pot back in that I peeled off and add it back on top of those. And then last but not least, I've got my thank you sentiment that I'm going to attach and because I've already got the pots up on dimensionals, I am not going to put this on dimensionals. I'm just going to run a strip of adhesive across and put it right there in the middle. Um, I do like to be able to mail all of the cards that I make without extra postage. On occasion, I will run into issues with that and have to add extra postage. But for the most part, I want my cards to be usable Um with what people have on hand, which includes the basic postage. So I do watch how much I pop up things um, so that that part will work. So there we go. There is uh, my first card with the earthen textures. And I have to say this came out as I expected it to. So I'm pleased with that since I wasn't, I didn't have it done to start with. And then when you open it up, it's you are proof there is good in the world. So that is what this card's going to look like. Now I did cut out, um, because I was actually going to try to have this card made ahead of time, so I cut out a slightly different version um, where I would have this pot instead of the teal one in the middle. And so that's just an option for you as well when you're making that card. And you could, of course, leave it uncoated um, with the blend brush and just throw in the different pieces. If you wanted to use this as your pot, you could even do that. Um, the back side of this one looks like that. So that's kind of a cool pot too if you wanted to do them all in brown. You'd have that piece made for you. And then you could stick in your different pieces. and basically have a different appearance to your card simply by changing up a little bit your pot and 
or the pots that you choose to use and not highlighting this or you could I know let's try this you can stick around here I have a, an idea on what we might do to change this one up just a little bit I'm going to grab another one of my blending brushes but this time I'm going to get my peacock color out and again this is a new ink pad so I want to be very careful that I get the dark circle off first and then I'm just going to come in and very lightly that's kind of pretty too with the peacock I like that okay we're gonna go ahead and make the second card too and then you can see what it looks like and you can tell me which one you like better how's that sound So I'll put that in the middle and then I am going to grab, I'm going to put these pieces on just a little bit differently than I did last time. Um, I will put this up on my dimensionals just so I know where it is. That'll help me with spacing. I think part of the reason I like these colors is it reminds me of my mom. These are definitely, I always kind of tease her that when we had our colors done, she came out as a fall on her colors. If you've ever had that done, you know what I'm talking about. So the brown tones and the rust tones are really what she is most comfortable in and looks best in. I don't care for those colors in part because they don't look good on me. And so um, it, it just reminds me of the colors that she likes. All right, then we're gonna add our gold fan. I'm gonna put that just kind of over here with our teal leaf. Now, one thing that I struggled with a little bit when I was die cutting this image in particular with that narrow stem is getting it lined up in the die and so what I did is I set my die up higher and then slid it down um, so that I could see where the stem was and make sure that I had it centered in the die um, rather than trying to line it up on the stem. It was easier to do it from the top and then just slide it down so that I knew it was centered over the stem. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, it just gave me a better perspective for lining things up. All right, we're going to add that, and then we will add this piece. Whoops, that didn't work so well. I'll add this piece. On here and I did have a second one of these cut just like I had a second one of the pot top of the pot but I'm not seeing that right now and so I will have to come back and add that and I think I am going to make this one on this side so we'll put that here the pattern on here really is they look like they're glazed pots it's kind of cool Slide that piece up just a little bit so that my pot can line up better. There we go. And then last but not least, we've got this pot. And if I can find the top to it, I will add it. If I can't, um, this pot is good as it is. And like I said, I'll continue to look for the top for this piece. And if I find it, I'll add it. If I don't find it, I'm not going to add it. And Either way, the card is going to be done, and it will look just fine. And I can always cut another top if I think it really needs it. So let me get this piece adhered to the front, and then you can tell me which card you like better, the one that's got more teal for the pots 
or the one that's all brown for the pots with kind of the peacock on the bricks. There we go. So let me know in the comments which one you prefer of the two cards. I'm kind of actually, I like this blue background or the peacock background on that one. Oh, but we should put our thank you on here too, shouldn't we? You can tell I had to stamp it twice because I thought it was crooked the first time. It's a good thing we have two sides to all of our paper because it helps us fix those types of things. So there you go. Here are the two cards using the earthen textures. Um, one with kind of an emphasis of um, the pretty peacock and one with the pecan pie. My pots are not very well centered here, but I kind of like how it looks with it a little that was an unplanned um thing but i think it worked out very well with that so again in the comments let me know which one you like best and we will see everybody next week thanks again for joining me bye bye